600 years before the time when this history took place, seven minor kings were famous in Tamil Nadu apart from Muvandras. They were also given the title of Valals. One of those seven was Ori, the leader of the Koli Hills. He was known as an unparalleled archer. If he bends his mighty bow and shoots an arrow, it will strike first a tiger, then a deer, then a boar, then a rabbit, just as Rama's arrow struck the seven trees. Thus his archery skills were studied by poets. Since then it has become customary to refer to him as Valval Ori. Churan, who was the strongest Vendan of that day, was angry with Ori in the Koli Hill Valval. To attack him, Thirukovalarth leader Malayaman enlisted the help of Thirumudikari. Kari's valor is inferior to Ori's valor. Also, Malayaman Kari had more force. Malayaman took an army to Koli Hill and killed Valval Ori and destroyed his hill fort. At the same time, a small land king named Nejamananji ruled the land next to Koli Hill. He has a relationship with Valval Ori. He wanted to take revenge on Malayaman Kari who had killed Valval Ori. Thinking that he alone could not do it, he sought the help of the Chola king Kilivalavan. Kilivalavan was angry at Malayaman's increasing strength and his friendship with Chera. So Kolan Kilivalavan and Thagadarbatham together attacked Thirukovalar Malayaman. Malayaman shot heroic heaven on the battlefield. The two young sons of Malayaman were captured by the Chola warriors. Kilavalava, who wanted to destroy the dynasty of Malayaman, ordered the children to be buried up to their necks in the earth and trampled to death by the foot of an elephant. At that time, a poet who knew the weakness of Malayaman and took advantage of it arrived there. He pleaded with the Chola king for the lives of Malayaman's children. No. Look. Look at the faces of the children buried up to their necks. Look at the creepy smiles on those faces. The children are laughing at the elephant who is going to trample them to death and singing its hymn. You are going to kill such innocent children? What sin did those children commit? Can the children be punished for the crime committed by the father? Said Bulavar. On hearing that, Chola changed his mind. He immediately changed his order. He made the children pick up from the floor. After coming of age, he gave back the kingdom of Thirukovalar to the eldest son. From the first century onwards, the Thirukovalar Malayaman dynasty was gratefully friendly to the Chola kings. That relationship continued till Sundara Chola period. Sundara Chola had married Vanamadavi, the daughter of Malayaman, as a Mahishi. Their dynasty was destroyed by Ori Takadar in the Koli Hill Valley. Yet the Sambuvaris of Kadampur claimed their descent from their branch dynasty. The Sambuvaris did not forget the enmity their forefathers had with the Malayaman dynasty of Tirakovalar. So is it not natural that they did not want Malayaman's grandson to crown himself as the emperor of the Chola Empire? Aditha Karakalan's arrogance and the way he behaved with little respect for the minor kings gave more reason to the hatred of the Sambuvaris. It was because of this that the Sambuvarias actively engaged in efforts to install Kandaradatha's son Madhuranthi on the Tanjore throne. But from the day Karakalan came to Katapur, the great Sambuvariyar's heart changed little by little. His wealthy daughter, Mani Megala, was the reason for his conversion. There were many signs that Manamegala had captured the heart of Aditha Karakalan. Karakalan was being talked about as a man who had no regard for women and was going to spend his life as a celibate. Ever since such a man came to the Kadampur mansion, he often went to the places where women were and flirted with them. Mainly he often spoke highly of Mani Mikala Sudakai. Ever since Karakalan came, Manamegalai was equally excited. The great Sambuvariyar felt that it was because she was also attached to Kari Kalan. Seeing the joy of both of them, Sambuvari was excited. If Kari Kalan marries Manamekalai, his rich daughter will become the empress of the Chola Empire. The child born to her will also belong to Tanjore. Then they too can achieve the pride that Thirukovalar Malayaman has achieved today. Why should he be an obstacle to all that? Why should he disturb the ascension of his beloved daughter? Why should he be an obstacle to all that? Why should he disturb the ascension of his beloved daughter? Why should he be an obstacle to all that? 
why should he disturb the ascension of his beloved daughter? It is true that Sam Bavariar had earlier the idea of marrying his daughter to Madhurinthagan. But Madhurinthagan already had two wives. He was married to the daughter of Chinapalyavatarayar and had a son by her. Therefore, if Madhurindhakan ascends the throne, the descendants of Palyavatare will be entitled to the title. Manamegalai will have to live as one of the many city women in Tanjore Palace. But if Aditha Karikalana marries Manamegala, she will be the Padamehis Hiaya. Singh Adana belongs to the child born to her. Giving the title to Madhurindha is a matter of great love for Brahma. People will be against it. It will have to be achieved by fighting with Malay Aman and Kajum Balar Vilan. Madhurindha's mother stands in the way. Why go to such a troublesome effort? The coronation of Aditha Karikalan is already a done deal. There will be no difficulty in accomplishing it. The stubbornness of the vandals will be the biggest obstacle. The elder among them falls in love with the younger queen. I don't know how long he will be alive. Why trust this old man and get involved in such a dangerous thing? It is true that he has sworn to be on Madhurandhagan's side. So what? Is there no way to get things done without taking part in the vows? It is known that Madhurandhagan was an innocent child. He can even be made to say, I don't want a kingdom. Or insisting on his mother's consent is enough. Sam Bavariyar's heart had started to think like this. He therefore enthusiastically supported the idea of Palyavatarayar going to Tanjore. In his absence, he thought that he could talk to Kari Kalan privately and get to know his heart better, and then act wisely. So he himself hastened and sent the great destroyer to Tanjavur with his entourage. After Palyavatarayar left, Aditha Kari Kalan and his companions set out for hunting. Sam Bavariyar was willing to send Mani Mikala and other women of the village with them. But Kanamaran, who was observing everything happening from a different angle, objected to it. He realized that all the effort Kari Kalan showed to Manamegalai was for Nandini. Due to this his hatred towards Kari Kalan grew. I could not even explain all this to my father. Therefore, he said, what am I going to do with a gathering of women in a hunting ground? It's all right to see if they're safe. And this is the month of fifties and the heavy rains can start at any minute. The lakeside forest will be flooded. The women will go crazy. He said that. On that Sam Bavariyar also abandoned the idea. Aditha Kari Kalan took his companions Parthapendra, Vandiyathevan, Kanamaran and other hunters and left. After everyone had left, the Sam Bavariyar mansion was deserted. Nandini looks at Manamekali and says, Men seem like a nuisance to us when they are at home. But even when they are gone somewhere, we feel uncomfortable. We don't even get a point to smile. She said. Yes, sister. We can also go hunting. I love to go hunting. I go sometimes with my father and Tamaya. But today Kanamaran has stubbornly forbidden it. Maybe he has forbidden you because you don't like hunting, or what? said Manamekali. Yes, I don't like hunting that much. I'd be horrified at the sight of blood. But Kanamaran didn't say that. He only forbade it to separate you and one of your house guests. She said. Manamekali had pimples on her cheeks. Looking at the ground for a while, she said, let the men go somewhere, sister. We don't want their company. We can go to the lakeside water hall and play with the water. Are you coming? She said. Nandini asked her father to agree to it and made the necessary arrangements for it. Have you not seen that there is a big bank at the bottom of Viranarayana Lake and 74 Madhavas in it? There is no such large bank at the top of the lake. The depth of the lake water decreased little by little and the lake shore was a level ground there. Still further to the west lay thick forests. In this way small islands were seen here and there in the area where the water level of the lake decreased. The islands were thickly covered with trees and vines. On the banks of one of the Adivas, a steppe temple and a Niraji Mandapam were erected. Here, the women of Kadampur Sambhavariyar used to come to bathe and have fun. If you want to reach that place, you have to go around the lake for two hours. 
Because of this, even though it is known that the women of the Sambhavariyar family bathe, strangers do not come there. Nandini and Manamegala boarded the boat and arrived at the island. Two friends who knew how to steer a boat came along. They also brought cooking supplies in the boat. On reaching the steps of the Niraji Mandapam, the friends unloaded the boat and started cooking in the Mandapam. Nandini and Manamegala were sitting on the stairs for a while and talking. Manamekalai, a naturally gifted woman, addicted to mischief. She pretended to speak like Palyavatarayar and Karikalan, Kanthamaran, Parthapendran, and Vandiyathevan. Seeing and hearing all that, Nandini was smiling as Kalir, Kalir. However, it was revealed that her attention was not entirely on Manimikala and her mind was occasionally engaged in some private thought. Suddenly Manamegal jumped up and stood up. Sister! We have not gone hunting, but hunting has come for us. Screaming, she took the knife from her waist. Nandini also got up startled and looked in the direction where she had seen Mani. A panther was spotted perched on a large tree branch leaning over there. The leopard was looking at them as if wondering whether to pounce on them or not. At the same time, the sound of horses jumping into the water was heard in the distance. 